I always open a beverage like right before I start filming and then I don't drink it at all while I film. Hey Hodies, welcome to my channel. My name is Hope Mess Tom and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we're gonna do some Surat first impressions mixed with some stuff that I already know. So if you've been interested in the brand Surat, I would love to have you join me on this journey. But if you happen to be new here, hi, welcome. My channel is mostly about loving my makeup collection as it currently is, while being critical and discerning of any makeup that comes my way. Everything isn't automatically invited into my makeup collection so while we're gonna be testing a lot of Surat I highly doubt that all of this makeup will be stuff that I keep around a lot of it might get passed on to friends and you will get to see that process with me I like to do my reviews very longly like I try to take my time to really get to know the product so I can be a good resource hopefully to you so if this kind of content sounds good to you I would love to have you subscribe make sure you like this video it will get it into the eyes of more people who might be interested in Surat and I am also on patreon.com if you would like to support me there there's no pressure to do so I'm just happy that you're here engaging like liking, commenting, all those things are just as well as being patrons. But if you happen to be a patron, thank you so much for making content like this happen. Also, I have merch if you want to buy that. If you are new to my channel, so where I do have first impressions, this isn't like a review. Now, some of the items I have versions of in different colors, so I've like tried the formula already. Surat had been kind enough to reach out to me after I tagged them all the time because I love the Surat Dewdrop Foundation. It's like one of my, well, it, but I think it's one of my favorite makeup products that like I just have. Like, I just love the Surat Dewdrop Foundation. And they asked if they could send me some PR. So I have have some PR that I have had for some time. So if you have been on my channel for some time, you've already seen some of these things. And uh, I was like, do you want a full Surat brand review? And then a lot of you showed interest in that. And then Surat, as we all know, is a kind of pricey brand. And since they were kind enough to send me stuff before, I was like, hey, my audience is kind of interested in seeing some more of your makeup. Is there any way I could get some more things? And I had like select things I wanted to try that I think would be maybe like the most interesting to you. So I don't have like everything from the brand. I did not, I didn't, I never want to feel like I'm like just asking for, like that's so much makeup, like to ask for a full line. I'm trying even in my PR requests. I don't want to like over consume. I really do want to try to get things in my hands that I think I'm going to like and I think I'm going to want long term. Now that doesn't always work out 100% of the time, but like I just want to be like more discerning. So anyway, I said this is the first impressions of some of these products. So keep that in mind. This is not like my final thoughts on these things. I'm literally putting them on my first, like I have them in the boxes still. This is like another call to action. I don't normally do this twice, but like if you want to see the nature of my growth with these, subscribe. We will probably come back like a month or two to like, I will be like, this is it. I've spent a month with this. I spent two months with this. Here's my final thoughts on the Surat stuff. So you will also see them intermittently throughout my my content. I asked you like if you really want to know what I think to stick around for the long haul because a very big part of how I like to review things is how consistently do I reach for it? Now obviously that's going to be like a unique unto me experience. If a formula or a color calls to me and I keep going back to it, I think that's a noteworthy thing. And that also tells me like that piece of makeup probably belongs in my makeup drawers and belong, like it stays there. But the shades that I don't use that much, those belong to someone else. Those aren't mine. Those aren't for me. Anyway, I always do like these really long disclaimers when I do first impressions because a lot of the content you see on YouTube is first impressions and I'm not about that. And I also just love seeing content creators consistently use things that you saw them use for the first time a couple of times. And then like a couple months down the line, you hear like, hey, I have, I continue to use this product. But also if they say they've continued to use this product, you can also go on videos and see that they in, in, in fact have used it on camera multiple times. That's not to say these people don't test things in their personal time. I'm not trying to accuse anyone of anything, but like I like to, you know, I like just like to, you know, whenever you know I'm testing something, I want you to see it. Except I do sometimes do like surprise brand reviews too, where I like secretly use something for a few months behind the scenes, but I, work, I do like a whole week's worth of content on that. Anyway, I'm just gonna get into it. I always start with my eyes. I have no new eyeshadows to use. So we're gonna go with the original six eyeshadows that they sent me. I think we're gonna go more cool toned today, even though I'm wearing like this bright colorful top. Here are the six shades that they sent me. I will put them on the screen for you because I don't actually know the names of them, but I do have like a picture with them all labeled and I will be able to get that to you. In fact, I will put my own label on the back to help me help you in the future so I can just talk about it. Plan here is to do these two browns, this purple all over the lids, and then top it with this white shade here. So that's what I'll be building out. I need to clean my brushes desperately, so I would not like any feedback, please. This is the Blink Eyeshadow Primer. I 
stopped talking about eyeshadow primer and then I didn't, I, and then people started asking me again, do I think this is the best eyeshadow primer? No, but my favorite eyeshadow primer I ever tried, the brand just doesn't exist anymore. It was Air Atelier. Literally like right when I was getting back into YouTube and I was like, this is my eyeshadow primer, the brand shut down. But they were like an interesting kind of quirky kind of brand, I would say, because their main product, their like only products were primers. So they had like a lip primer, a face primer, and I'm just using a translucent setting powder to set that. I have very oily eyelids. I've talked about these eyeshadows before in my videos. So I will save like the more detailed for my final video, but I did do like a detailed review like within a uh, get ready with me slash what I call let's play with makeup. The TLDR is these are really beautiful, lovely eyeshadows, just incredibly beautiful easy to blend, do do exactly what you're asking them to. If you have textured eyelids, you know, I don't have any like intense texture issues. My, my, my main issue with my eyelids is that they're oily. I think it's just gonna perform just really beautifully on any eyelid. The only problem I really have with them is that they don't have a, a great longevity on my eyes. They crease on me. But on people with dry eyelids, I have not heard that from my peers, like khaki swears by these now, like they've become kind of like a holy grail situation for her. State of Kate also has used Surratt eyeshadows in the past and she said to me that she did not have any issues with it. I feel like whenever I talked about it, the people who had used Surratt eyeshadows all really like them. So I, I feel like, pretty confident that like these, like I think they're great eyeshadows. It's really hard for me to like sit up here and say that I'm gonna get really picky about longevity because I kind of like a creasy eyelid. It creases like almost beautifully. So if you've ever used like um, an eyeshadow that's almost like intended to crease, like the, the Rowan eyeshadows, if you like the way that creases and you have oily lids, I feel like it's kind of the same situation. You can kind of tap it out, but like, you know, it's like, it's a little bit of a bummer that they don't stay in place with for me all day. And I have tried like glitter, primers to, you know, trying to like really get into making it work for longevity for me. But I would say that like four hours is normally where it had started breaking up on me. And I don't actually like to work on eyeshadow primer that's not set because it's sticky and it doesn't blend. But maybe I'll give that a go and see if that does anything different. But I don't think I wanna do that experiment on camera because I don't know what will happen. I typically, you know, I just doing my eyeshadow the way I usually do it. And then also, you know, that's an important note that like, if the makeup doesn't work the way you like to wear makeup, then it's not gonna be worth your, your dollar. Not to dismiss the quality of these eyeshadows. They're very beautiful. It is not hot today. It is rainy out and the humidity is like so intense and it just feels like the air in my room is like incredibly stagnant. I know that fanning just like, you know, increases your heart rate and makes you sweat more, but like, well, I'll change into shorts. Let's see if that helps. <laughs> I think that's gonna be helpful, but I wanna tell you that I wasn't wearing like heavy sweatpants or anything like that. I was just wearing like very thin athletic joggers and I'm just sweating. I sweat. So just so much sweating, so much sweating. And the thing was, it has been like nice all week. And then today, it's just like dreary. It's a Saturday as I film this. And it's just like, when it's a dreary Saturday, there's like nothing worse than that. Especially like if it's been like really beautiful all week. Oh my God, it's just like, it's kind of the worst. Okay, and then I'm just gonna use my finger to take some of the sparkly shade and just tap that over the purple. And that's where the eye look will live for now. But I do have another product from them that we will be putting on my eyes later. Now we're moving on to complexion and I'm actually not gonna be using the Surratt Dew Drop Foundation. I figured since I had it, it couldn't hurt to ask the brand if they would send me their other foundation, which I have on my hands. And this is the the Surreal Skin Foundation Wand. It's big, It's it's like, Big. <laughs> I know that this product is supposed to be refillable. This is, this is really big. My head for scale, but also here's the Surratt Dewdrop Foundation for scale. The Victoria Beckham Primer for scale. It's like almost the same size as the Victoria, but it's big. This is really big. Let's read the instructions. Do you have instructions? Not on the box. You know, sometimes brands will put like a little info sheet inside the box. I'm wondering if it's in there. I mean, it's not something that I can't figure out how they want me to apply it. 
I don't know if this is like a twist up situation or if it's like a, a button. And I got it in the same shade 1.5 and it has a, a brush on the end. I have some thoughts on this already. Surratt also makes brushes that are, I think they're Fuva brushes. They're like prestigious brushes. <laughs> I'm assuming that they use natural, natural hair brushes in their brushes. I just was looking at the box to see if I could find if this was like synthetic or natural hair. That doesn't bother me. I will use a natural hairbrush, but I know that would be like a turn off to some people. So I'm not, I'm not trying to be controversial there. I'm just like, I'm just genuinely curious. You know what I would like? So I just did this. I put this on and the brush is getting, do you see what's happening there? I don't like that, especially when I start getting product on the bristles. I just, I just don't think that I'm going to like that. I have lamented so much about the Dewdrop Foundation and just how awful this packaging is. It's incredibly awful. Now, this, I think that if you have mobility issues and your like dexterity issues and your finger, like it's a no go. It's like non-negotiable. I would not recommend this to you. And this has like a twist off top, which I know could can be a little even harder but like this button this mechanism is like not it if you have those kind of issues so this is so far like much more approachable I think from an accessibility standpoint this is but like I just don't think we need to reinvent the wheel so much when it comes to this and the other thing that I think is interesting now I, I don't know how like, I, I couldn't tell you how to refill this. Like, I don't know how I would refill this. If it's refillable, then I would have liked to have seen a mechanism that would pull up above this. And I've seen this in like makeup, like travel makeup brush, like containers where like this will slide up to protect the bristles. And then when you put the cap over top of it, the cap pushes that mechanism down and it keeps the brush from bending. So I, I don't like this any better than I like, I like it's, Definitely much more accessible, but I still think it's not good packaging just from the get-go. Like, I just don't think it's good. And then my second thought coming back to like the refillableness of this is like, if this is a synthetic brush, it's just like, it's like, this doesn't feel like a forever brush if this is refillable packaging. Like, is this really the brush that I want to use with this? It's just like questions I'm asking. Maybe it will be. I'm going to be using the Victoria Beckham with Augustinus Bader Cell Rejuvening priming moisturizer and I'm gonna apply this all over my face and I'm actually really excited to try this because I like I like the Surratt Dewdrop foundation like so much like I love it so much I'm hoping that I feel similarly to this foundation and that way it could give people some options and I know that Khaki, Khaki and I got PR from Surratt around the same time Khaki seemingly liked this foundation more than the Dewdrop so I'm curious to see what I think so I'm gonna apply this to half of my face I'm gonna use the brush that it comes with that might be a mistake it appears to be like a button mechanism so that was one pump two three four okay there's some came out, some came out on the fourth pump, which honestly, faster than I was expecting. So let's just see. Okay, that wasn't much product. I'm gonna do another pump. I'm already not liking this mechanism, this brush mechanism, but I'm just gonna blend it out. I don't like this brush, but I think maybe this brush might be also good for people who have dexterity issues. This is nice and thick. Compared to like a normal brush, there's a lot more to hold on to here. So also something to consider. I think when we're talking about accessibility, I think a lot of brands forget that. And I'm not saying that that should be the case. I'm not saying that that's okay, that that is what's going on. It's just like, sometimes, you know how sometimes brands like fall into accidental accessibility? Like when Rare Beauty had their packaging. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna do, I'm like not sure if like one pump would be like the one press of the, there we go. I just need more, I just need more. Although I kind of like the way it was looking before, but I was like, I don't know that it's enough to even show you. Cause I do like a light, to like medium coverage foundation. So I didn't like, the, I didn't mind the way it was looking and that might be how much I apply usually whenever I start using this product for testing, but there's no discernible scent. There might be fragrance in it, but like sometimes you know how like the, fra like they'll make the fragrance smell very like clean and natural. Also I scratched my face and I noticed this on my, my video that came out on Friday, my Ask Me Anything, and my highlight like was getting like chopped in half by it. But uh, yeah, I scratched my face and it's pretty bad. Anyway, here's the foundation on half my face. 
Uh, it's it's lovely. We will certainly do this versus all of my other foundations in my collection. You know, we're going to do that. I'm going to put it into the final review for Surat. So my Sur well, not that my final Surat video wasn't going to be long already, but it's going to be long. It's going to be long. I'll zoom you in closer so you can get an even closer look at the skin. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm whenever I, I'm, I'm curious to see it's, it's, it's like kind of reminding me of the dewdrop. And like, if they happen to be a very similar formula, then I'm wondering, what's the point? Like, what would be the point of having, of having both? And if this just happens to be a different mechanism, I feel like I definitely have more on my skin right now than I would like, but it's still like, I would say it's like medium. It's like we're at medium coverage. You can still see some like redness coming through. You can still see like the, the pigmentation in my like moles all on the side of my face. But like beautiful light diffusing qualities coming from it's like it looks really good. <laughs> I'm not gonna complain about it. I'm gonna do the other side of my face. As I was getting more product out on the brush, it was more enjoyable to use. Also, am I like what's the cleaning process? <laughs> like I guess I have a lot of questions, and then I also feel as though the nothing came with it. Like it didn't say like treat this brush like your other makeup brushes, especially if it's like supposed to be refillable. I probably should have tried to open the refillable compartment before I started applying the foundation. Yeah, this is a pretty crap brush. It's leaving streak marks in it. I don't think the foundation would have that same issue with like a higher quality brush, but also my brushes do need to be cleaned. So I'm kind of thankful that I did have a different application method with it. But and now that I'm not, I'm kind of assuming that I'm not going to use this brush as an application method. Now I'm wondering how I'm going to apply it different ways. Maybe like I apply the streaks and then I blend out with another mechanism, like another brush or a sponge or something. That's really natural looking. It's really beautiful. So, yeah, I don't know that it's going to be, I don't know, I don't know. First impressions with this kind of coming to the same conclusions that I have with the Dewdrop Foundation where it's like, this product is very lovely, but this packaging is very stupid. They have a concealer, which I did get, and look at how small this box is. And this is their Surreal Skin Concealer, so I guess it's supposed to kind of have the same finish as to what we have in our face. How many grams do we get in here? We'll definitely have to do like a gram comparison. It's so cool. Like, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Uh, let me get another concealer. This is the Armani Luminous Silk. I don't know it's really fair to compare it to the Givenchy because we all know the Givenchy is like pretty large and in charge, but this is little. Surat's not cheap, but I don't know how much they're charging for this. But this is the shade two. I don't really love cream concealers, but it was their only concealer other than in a palette. And I think I would use the palette less than I would use this. So I got some on my finger and I'm just going to tap it under my eye. The reason is I find that stick concealers always really enhanced texture under my eye. But I have also learned that like pressing it in with my finger normally actually results in a very beautiful application. I just think it needs that like warmth to be worked in. So I have it on this eye. It's like kind of hard to see, but you can definitely tell that this just looks a little bit smoother than what we have going on over here. Also, the interesting thing is the concealer doesn't come in like the same shades. Like both foundations, I have 1.5 and on my face, it appears that they are like very similar because it matches. I think we're going to have to maybe play with this before my foundation one day to see, like get a real feeling for the coverage. So the only other stick product I have in my collection right now is the Merit Perfecting Complexion Stick, which I use more as a foundation as opposed to concealer. So I don't know that I would like really compare the two, but we can under the eyes as concealer. It blended out beautifully. Again, I don't have like encyclopedic knowledge of stick concealers because I just typically avoid them, but like that's really pretty and I, I mean, if I'm using it as a concealer the way I just did, I imagine that this would last me quite some time. It is just, it's like comparatively, like and not that I want a foundation stick size of this, it's just so itty bitty. And it's like some of the Surratt packaging, while it is questionable, feels luxurious, has weight to it. And this, this, it, this doesn't have any of those things. In fact, it like doesn't even really have this beautiful ombre situation. So if I were a makeup artist, 
this would be really easy to have a bunch of these in my kit and it's like very lightweight so I can see that and this brand ultimately is a brand I think designed by a makeup artist for makeup artists but I have a lot of questions about that because I find the packaging on a consumer level and also for a makeup like a working makeup artist I don't find it conducive to either <laughs> so I like I'm that I have some questions about I have some Follow-up questions I would like to ask Mr. Troy, Mr. Troy Surratt. Whenever I ask them to send me a bunch of stuff, I know I don't have to do this, but I was like, well, I'll buy a couple of things. And I don't know what that is about me. I don't know what, it, I was just like, I, I guess I should buy some things to support the brand. And like, I have actually no problem buying stuff from Surratt because I wanted to buy some different shades in a formula that I have already received. And I'm sure if I asked them to send me it whenever I asked them for the rest of this stuff that they absolutely would have. But I was just like, I I'll buy them. I already know I like them. But this is the Fenty Cheeks Out Bronzer in Amber, which I use to contour, but I really want to try Grisaille. I want to try it as a contour, but I also want to try it as a blush. It's like on my, it's like truly on my to-do list to get that. It's out of stock. And I was actually talking to Kaki about this the other day. I was like, I'm literally trying to buy stuff from brands. I was trying to, and listen, I haven't been in the mood where I just like want to buy something for no reason in quite some time. But like, I was like feeling it the one day. And it, you know, honestly, it's probably good that everything that I wanted was out of stock because it's like not cheap. But also I hadn't spent my beauty budget in a while. And I was like, well, I'm itching, I'm itching. If you're a patron of mine, you already know what I've spent my budget on. I posted a photo today as I record. So I, I did decide my next secret brand review is I just bought it, but, but like we're in the process. We're in process. There's a brand that's been selected. Anyway, I was going to buy Grisaille and I was going to buy a powder highlighter and I was going to buy, they only have one shade they list as a bronzer. So I won't like, I'll be using my own in some things. So the contour being the Fenty contour is one of the things that I'm just pulling from my own collection. The thing is the bronzer shade, there's only one bronzer shade. It's the only one shade that they list as a bronzer in their artistic blushes. And there's only one shade that they list as a contour in their artistic blushes. And I would like to try them. And they also have a couple powder highlighters. It's interesting. It's, it, it's confusing because I feel like they have really beautiful products for all skin tones, but not in everything. And I mean that in like both directions where it's like things that aren't light enough, but they have like deep options and things in like deep options, like things they have for lighter options. They don't have deep options. It's really confusing. Like Grisaille appears to be a very beautiful contour shade, but they don't have like a deep contour shade, but they also have like really beautiful blushes that I think would really work on deep complexions. Before we powder, which I did get their powder. Well, I got one of their powders, which we'll talk about in a second. I have six of the Artistique blushes they sent me, and this is their original powder formula. I really get on with this formula. I haven't like made my final call on that, so I'll just save that for the final video, but I have talked a lot about the shade Barba Papa, which, you know, that's probably how close or how do you say it, but I say Barba Papa. So I like to put Barba Papa. It's just like my favorite shade they sent me, and it's this beautiful pink with blue and Barba Papa in French is like the term for cotton candy. I think the exact translation is like dad's beard, which is like kind of weird or grandpa's beard. Anyway, so it's this beautiful blush and it's this satin bubblegum pink, but like it sh this has like blue sparkles in it. It's like killer. If you're new here, I don't really care. Like I have, I don't really care for pink cosmetics too much. So for, for the, of all six blushes that they sent me and I love orange blushes and they sent me three beautiful orange blushes and I literally like push these aside because I want to always use Barba Papa. And I actually don't care for this shade down here. This is the shade Classique. And Gleave Mauve is like really pretty, but very natural. And like, I, I probably will get a lot of use out of it, like inherently, but like on camera, like, you know, you just like to punch up your makeup a little bit. And Barba, pa Barba Papa gets so much play. They also sent me two of these in the original PR package. They sent me Classique. These are the artistic they're like the liquid artistic blushes. So Cantaloupe and Classique, I have both of those. When I was perusing their site to like ask for more stuff, they also have Barba Papa in the liquid blush. And I was like, let's see if it's just as spectacular as the powder version. So we're gonna find out together today. As with all of the packaging, I've already kind of lamented on my channel about this. It's like, it has a sponge top, but it's unlike the Charlotte Tilbury kind of applicator or even the one from what's that concealer the Maybelline instant age rewind concealer this has like a hole in the top and that's where the product comes out of and then I guess like you're supposed like in, in theory you use the sponge to apply it just get some well that's a lot well that's probably enough for both cheeks but let's put it on let's put it on one cheek first maybe not that much actually I'll just use my finger 
Oh my god, this is way too much. Actually, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I actually, you know, it doesn't have, it doesn't appear to, but maybe it does very softly. I'm gonna put a little on the back of my hand and buff, buff it out. Here are my findings so far with this liquid version. For, first of all, I love this formula. I, I put too much on, but that was how much popped out. And once you get it out, it's not as hard to control. But I'm gonna take the powder Barba Papa and buff it out next to the liquid. So there they are on top is the liquid and on bottom buffed out is the powder. So on camera, I feel like the wetness is making me think that there's, there is like a slightly less blue sheen on in this. I think it's there, but it's, it's, it's less. It's not as much as it is in the powder form, but buffed out on my hairy arms. <laughs> it's a little hard to, it's a little hard to see that. And I think the color is slightly different and maybe the actual pigmentation of this blush, the liquid has a little more blue. Like it has a little more blue in it to make it like feel a little more blue, but like these are both pretty. It's not the exact same thing. I, w I don't I don't know that I really feel like this is well and also, you know, maybe that's not what they were going for. It's like, you know, the vibe of the powder version. But it's really it's really pretty. So what I like about this formula is that it is really simple to use and very forgiving liquid formula and I really didn't like liquid products before like Surratt sent me these, they make me nervous, right? Because I feel like they're a little hard to control. And I guess, you know, we did see that I got a little bit too much out of the container, but it's such a wash, like a wash of color that it's like, it doesn't feel clownish, which is like the other thing. Like sometimes liquid formulas, they're so pigmented and then they're hard to blend. Or sometimes like the spot dries where you initially apply it. But like you have a good amount of time to blend these out without having to panic. On a day where I'm not putting it on half my face to take a look at it, I will dot both sides of my face with this formula and like b buff it out and it's fine. Like it, it gives me a lot of time to do that. I think this is a very easy and forgiving liquid blush formula, but I almost feel like the sheen on the liquid version is more silver than it is like that blue. Right now, my recommendation to those of you who might have been interested in Barba Papa, if, if you like the idea of like that fun blue, almost iridescent, it's not actually iridescent, but it almost like feels iridescent and very playful and fun, then I would go with the powder one. If you're a little bit of afraid of the powder one, but you like this bubblegum pink look and want to give it a try, the liquid version would be my recommendation. Okay, I also have another liquid, well, cream product before we move on, but this is fun. <laughs> I really actually like this. Okay, I also asked for, this is the cream highlighter. This is the Torch Lumiere in Diamante, which I believe is Oh, whoa, whoa, that is glittery. That is, I was not expecting it to be that glittery. Cause like, woo, okay, okay. Um, Let me, yeah, okay, let me just put, I'm gonna just put some on like the corner of my thumb here just for us to like see. Okay, that's it unblended. I did no buffing, wow. Oh, uh, wow, okay. And then that's it buffed out. Ooh. I guess I was expecting it to be more akin to like the Westman Atelier lit up highlight stick. I have the shade Nectar. I mean, I wasn't expecting the shade to be the same, but like kind of that also like Victoria Beckham, the it's like, it's like balmy and it has like a soft shimmer to it. But this is like, this is not a highlighter for the faint of heart. I'm going to take some and tap it on my skin. There's definitely glitter, like shimmer particles in here and you can kind of feel them when you like, when I rub my finger on this, I can kind of feel them. I'm going to just like tap it. I think many people would have just stopped with the blush because the blush is beautiful luminosity. Have you been to my channel? Oh, you might not have been to my channel, but I love a highlight. Extending my thought from initial look is like, I don't think this is a highlighter for the faint of heart. It is, there's glitter. There's like glitter. Now, I don't personally mind like a sparkly highlight, but it definitely, it doesn't have like the same vibe as like their other complexion products, which are just like incredibly elegant. And not that it's like not an elegant formula. It's just like, maybe I'll zoom you in and so you can see, like you can see like there are glitter, particles and that is not fallout from my eyes you can tell because it's more gold 
so far I'm, 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 I'm not loving this product. Maybe I will try to get my hands on by one of the powder highlighters. Just try to get my hands on those other things that I was want, uh, wanting to try from them. I don't know that this is it. I think to the delight of some of you <laughs> who watch my channel who are much more interested in like vibrant, intense makeup, this might be like more up your alley. But if you are one of my subscribers who maybe has like more mature skin or maybe skin that has more texture on it, I don't know that this is gonna be something that you live, laugh, love. I don't really have like a lot of texture on my skin. So like I this like an intense highlighter or a sparkly highlighter like this isn't like something that I have a lot of aversion to, but I know that people do. Also, you, you might be someone who's just like, no, I don't like, I, even if it did look good on my skin, I wouldn't be into that. It, so I can't say that, I'm a fan of that. Now I have the powder and I'm oh, sorry, I was just, I, you know, you, you spend so much time talking that something that I like to pay attention to is like, has the concealer creased at all? And I used a very small amount and it's, uh, it needs a little bit tapped out, but I've seen concealers do a lot worse under my eye. I typically, you know, set with, set with powder pretty quickly, but I also just got highlighter all under my eye. The next thing I have is their Eclatant Diaphine loose powder compact and refill. So this is like the starter pack, but this is like another refillable product from them. Okay, okay, this would have been helpful with the foundation. I was, remember when I pulled out the, this is like, here's like a little fact sheet. Let's read, let's see, let's see what I'm supposed to do. Okay, oh, this is telling me how to refill it. Push the tab in the center of the compact to open the main lid. Here is the compact. This is cool. Not weighted at all, by the way. I just, like, but it is, it's, it's, it's certainly cool to look at. It has a button. As far as accessibility goes, I'm not actually sure about this one. Again, I don't have dexterity issues, but sometimes when you interact with things, I know that sometimes these buttons from my friends who do have dexterity issues, like this is sometimes hard. This is a, this is, it's not, it's not like super thick. It's not like so grotesquely thick that I would like, but it is definitely like thicker than most compacts. And so I'm not sure if this like pebble might be a good, like, I don't know. I'm unsure about that, but ooh. You know, I never use the powder puff. Okay, lift the lid inside. So this is still just the packaging. Okay, insert the loose powder into the re refill center and push down to secure it in place. Okay, and then it's like, um before I get too far, it's like a mesh topped situation. I feel like everyone has different preferences when it comes to loose powders, how they feel about a, a mesh system. It's maybe my preferred, especially like when the mesh is bouncy. So that wasn't too difficult for me to do. I, but I could see that being very annoying if I had dexterity issues as far as like getting that in. It's one of those things like once it's in, it's in. I am now curious, cause this is refillable. When I am done with it, how do I get it out? This is Eclatant. So they don't have two shades. They have two finishes, but it's like in the same situation. So Eclatant is the more luminous powder. And I tried that because that's just like more my vibe. Even though I have oily skin, that's like more my vibe. I my, my thought is that it's going to make my skin look the way I want it to, as opposed to like the way that maybe society wants my skin to look. I'm just like curious, just curious about it. So this one definitely like looked more yellow than the matte one. So that's it there. I'm just gonna like, whoa, that is like incredibly finely milled. I'm gonna take my powder brush. Well, I it comes with a puff. Should we try the puff? I'll just, why not? It's here. So I'm gonna just take it and press it into my skin on this side and then we'll take a look versus the other side, like what it did. I'm gonna avoid the blush area because I want the blush to keep its luminosity from its like, you know, its beautiful finish. And obviously I don't need to like powder the highlight. It's a little messy doing it with a puff. It's like not really my gig. And I will say I was I'm 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 concerned about the the shade of this. Like I almost bought the matte, I almost asked for the matte one because I was like concerned about like the the shade of this. So I think doing it with the puff just is like way more powder than I also typically use. So I do think it maybe has tinted my skin a little bit from where I'm looking at you in the viewfinder, like in my monitor and my like in the viewfinder on my camera. It's like, I can't really see it that much. I'll zoom you in so maybe you'll be able to see. Like, I mean, you can tell where the pop, how powder stops for like a couple of reasons, uh, but it, it, I think that it's done a, it's done a lot of work blurring, but I, I feel like you can still see like there's a, a yellow, there's a distinctive yellow tint to it, but I think it did a really good job 
like perfecting the skin just a little bit. I'm gonna use a brush on the other side to get a more realistic version of like how I would use it. Like, will it be as yellow looking? Okay, so I don't know. To me, this is just feeling like any old setting powder, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. And I don't mean that like in a bad way. I feel like it's, you know, it's it's finely milled. It feel, and this is also something that like I feel like could change over time, like my relationship to how I feel about this. Now that I have it on my, like all over my face, it feels like the kind of powder for me that I wouldn't feel like compelled to need to use setting mist. Now, if you have like much drier skin than me, that might be different. Also, if you have much drier skin than me, you, you might skip out on this altogether. I don't think it did too much damage to the under eyes. Like the under eyes don't look too like cakey after doing that. I'm like, you know, figuring out my thoughts on this. I, I, I haven't really tested setting powders too much on my channel. I think it's nice. I think it's nice. I, I will have to continue playing with this and get back to you and see if it's like the setting powder that I choose to reach for. Now, I don't really like automatically reach for loose setting powders. In fact, I don't even have one in my, well, I have one that I explicitly use on my eyes from Pat McGrath, but I don't normally use it all over the face. I mean, actually it makes my pores look pretty good. But I don't know that I'm seeing like the, like the, the, the luminous situation because I know that there are also sometimes like a luminous setting powder that is just like way too shiny. So maybe there is an elegant glow to this that I'm like missing right now. I am gonna end up spraying my face though because I think from using the powder puff, my pores look a little not great right here. Like there's just powder in the pores and I don't, didn't look that way whenever I, before I had powdered, so. Okay, so we probably will spray my face. Okay, I'm going to put on some of my Tom Ford bronzer and then we will continue on our journey. I still don't think that this is like a, a highlighter that I'm gonna end up like falling in love with, but as it's sitting on my face, I like it more than when I first applied it. Like it's, it's, it's like, as it's becoming a little bit more one with the skin there, I mean, there's still glitter that has not gone away, but I like the way it's set, setting in. It's not emollient anymore. So it is, it has a dry down. I'm not experiencing like it's still being, like I don't think it's gonna move on my face now that it's on there. Like sometimes you put on a cream formula and it's like, I don't think that, I think that's gonna just move around. We're gonna go back to the eyes for a second. Khaki was like, Khaki was like, you need to try this. It's changed my life. And I said, okay. So I asked for one and this is one of the smoky eye batons and I got the shade Fume Brun. Um, maybe, maybe I did. I mean, it's in here, but can I get it out? I don't know, but I've always have trouble getting eyeliner, like thin pencils out of their boxes. It's just really hard for me. I have just like chubby little hands. So here it is. Oh no, this isn't what Khaki has. No, is it? Wait a minute. No, this isn't the thing that I wanted to try. Okay, well maybe I'll add that to my order. I really thought this was it. What is the thing that has the powder on the other end? Well, anyway, this is a an eyeliner, I hope. That's what I'm gonna use it for. Oh, there is, uh, 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 there it is. Uh, okay, okay, it is the thing, it is the thing. Okay, I was like, wait a minute, isn't there supposed to be another component to this? Okay, that's like a chunky liner, which I, it's all it's all tracking. Everything that Khaki has said about this has kind of like been my experience with it. So Khaki does a wing, which is like not really my gig. And like, I mean, it's not, she doesn't do like an intense wing, but for the sake of trying out what Khaki's always going on about, let's just get this going. Oh. Okay, I have like a little baby wing going and then I'm gonna take the other side. This is like really scary. I'm, I'm scared. Who's scared? I'm scared. And I'm gonna just, I guess, drag this. Oh, oh. Okay. I'm gonna do my other eye before I like, and then I, I have, I have, I have feelings about this. I can't say that I entirely understand what just happened. <laughs> Let me describe the experience to you. First of all, this is weird. It's weird. So, I mean, if you're using just the eyeliner side, I find that 
that's pretty great but I'm not gonna close this and then twist this other side off so when I'm I feel like when I'm using this side it feels like uh like I feel like a little bit nervous and then if you have both sides undone which I did for most of the time like that's how much you have to grip onto which again just from an accessibility standpoint unsure about that but let's just talk let me just move on to the quality of the the product this isn't weighted or anything sometimes Surratt stuff is randomly weighted like highlighter beautifully weighted the concealer not at all weighted again don't quite understand the crayon the actual like crayon side of things that was a beautiful formula not as creamy as the Victoria Beckham but like didn't drag on my skin at all I got instant pigmentation I did not have to like drag it back and forth like I put it on my skin and then I immediately got pigment the powder side which so that's what this other side is there's like a there's a powder and then you have this like this 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 and it's almost like the feeling that I'm getting is that it's just like the idea of a smudger, but it's like adding pigment kind of make it easier to smudge. So I'm wondering if like if I tried to just smudge out the the liner side, like the just the crayon side, if that would feel as that would buff it out. So maybe this like sponge tip applicator on the other end really gives you that the, the illusion of a smoky eye. So it's like applying I guess what only what I could assume is some sort of like eyeshadow and it was really fun to play with it it, it it it's like both weirdly something I never would have thought of but felt really intuitive to use it feels weird for me to say that to you as soon as it was like I think another thing that like I had a similar thing with was when I got the Hindash Beautopsy palette the first time I used it I was like really scared but then as I like got into it using it as eyeshadow and all over my face I was just like oh this makes a lot of sense this makes a lot of sense and like when I started doing it I was like I don't know about this I don't know about this and then I was like all of a sudden it made all of a sudden it's, it's pretty cool it's a pretty cool product now I have seen khaki use this to do something similar to what I did I definitely like went bigger than khaki did but my eyes are not as small as khaki's and that's not like a read it's just like khaki does a lot of work building an illusion on her eyes and I do not do that like I'm like having a little more playful fun and I've also seen that Hannah Louise Poston she did like a video on luxury makeup from Violet Gray and she bought one of these and she put it all over the list. Like she just did a whole thing. But I'm curious to see how like long this would like last on my eye. I'm it's interesting too. I think there is maybe a sheen to it because it looks like like it's not blended on camera and per like and I'm getting confused because when I look at it in person it looks fine but it's not looking like that in person like because right here it looks like something was going awry but I don't it might be the eyeshadows under it reflecting back but like in person it doesn't look like there's a bald spot there so I don't I don't know it, it's like one of those things where I'm like ah, this is a true this is truly wild but I really loved it and I kind of want it in every color but like also I don't but like also in a very real way I was like I would like to try this with other things like other colors I think brown was the good option for like what I do most of the time but like truly I could see myself wanting this in like the black version and just being like Pfft. Avril Lavigne 2003 you know like that it could be both of those things it could be like a very editorial elegant thing and then it also could be Avril Lavigne it's and I love that about it that was very fun to play with I like that. Is it a thing that I think anyone would like need to run out and buy? But no. But if like you're curious about it, that was fun to play with. Like I feel like that was like very fun to play. Like I love that. It's very, it's very rare whenever you experience so much makeup and not maybe not me as a content creator, but like I used to work at Sephora. So I have played with a lot of makeup in my short time in the makeup world. Very rarely when, whenever you see something that almost feels gimmicky and that feels gimmicky. Like I think a lot of what Kaja does also feels gimmicky and like that's not as intuitive to me. Like the, the you know, like thinking of their stamping blush thing I'm like I don't need that and I probably would have told you before I tried this this is something that I would like never feel joy using but I feel an immense amount of joy and it made me feel like it's very fun to use it's very fun to use I'm very excited about it I'm enjoying that okay let me spray my face and then we have mascara and then we'll put on a lip I don't know Mary, you be joy with what you do your thing gonna be your brow I don't think they have a setting mist and if they do I'm I'm just using fix plus <laughs> Now that I've sprayed my face, I feel, not that that, I don't feel like the powder looked heavy, but I feel like the spray like finished off the job a little bit when it came to the way the powder looked. So like, I mean, obviously Flix Plus does like a slight bit of blurring, like it gives you that little glycerin effect, but like I can tell like it like let the powder like come to its full potential 
by that spray. Again, the powder is something I'm certainly gonna have to like continue using to like figure out a bit more. I need to do an all powder look one day to be like, put my foundation on and then just put powder all over my face to really see if we can find that glow. There's a lot of new stuff going on. So, you know, I'll have to play with that a little bit more. I did get one of their lip slicks or their lip sleeks and I got the shade Heaven. Now, and is it like if, uh, I know I have, the reason I mentioned khaki so much is I know we have like a lot of crossover viewers and you might have wanted to see another shade in the lip slick, but I, I wanted to try this one. Now they have a brown one, but it does appear to be disappearing. Like right now they have some shades that are like 60% off because they're like, it's, they're, they're done done. And I was like, well, of the shades that are left, what would be a shade I would like? And I think I will like this. Very boring. In fact, I probably would usually add lip liner, but oh, that's much more vinyl-y and shiny than I was expecting it. But I guess it's called the Lip Slick. That's my bad, actually. I don't know why I didn't put two and two together. It has a twist click up bottom. So I would imagine that this formula is pretty soft. So you probably only wanna just like click it up once or twice when you're doing your application because a lot of these like glossier finish formulas, I feel like this is normally the applicator method to come in. This isn't weighted or anything, but it's like more consistent with the packaging than like the concealer was. That concealer is gonna be the bane of my existence. I know it. For me, this is just like my lips, but better and glossy, which honestly is not, not a bad thing to have on hand. And it's beautifully pigmented. I feel like I can't tell the full, like I can't see, I can't really tell how pigmented it is because it does appear to be like the same color of my lips, but it's a beautiful sheen, really comfortable, very light, like it. I like that. I don't have any kind of lipstick formula that is like this. So this is nice to have. I don't know that I feel like that that was gonna blow me away in any kind of fashion, but I'm actually glad that the brown was one that I didn't decide to go with, not because I don't think I would like the color. I think that in this kind of formula, this makes more sense. Like this like finish makes more sense and like a more natural. Now, it, again, that's my preference. That's not, some, that's not a rule. I'm not telling you what to do with your life in case you feel differently about that. But like for me, I feel like this makes more sense. We have one thing left and it is mascara. I know, shock horror. I did request a mascara and I thought about requesting the weird one, but I really was like, I'm not gonna like that. I like, I don't think I'm gonna like it. And I was like, I don't wanna just try like the thing that looked like it had a gimmick for no reason. And I'm sure that people love that, but this is the Releve Mascara. I have the shade Noir. I don't know that it comes in other shades. So I, this has the thinnest one of any mascara I have used in a long time. I'm gonna apply it to my right eye and then I will check in with you. Let me zoom in. I think there are fibers in this because I kind of got it everywhere, but I might be wrong because like I got it, I, I started applying it and I was like, oh my God. When I first put it on, I was like, oh man, there's like a, it's beautifully, it's like a beautiful separation. And it's like, it's like very lovely. I kind of like the thinner wand, it, you know, makes me a little bit less nervous, but I still somehow got some splotches in my eyeshadow. Not a big deal, like very easily. Something that I can wipe away. Yeah, I don't know that it's like the most exciting mascara that I've used but it's, it's like, it's nice. I'm gonna apply a coat to the other side and then we will apply a second coat just for fun. I'm not, a, I don't do that, but I know that some of you do that. And so I think this is like a worthwhile experimentation. It's not really volumizing. It, it does seem to be like a little more geared towards length than volume. Yeah, like I'm getting beautiful length on this. I do kind of like a combo. Typically what I'm looking for is a combo, but I would say I like, I appreciate volume, I think more than length. Although as I keep like, I keep playing with it and I'm, it's layering pretty well. You know, I don't really get a hard on for mascara as it is. Like it's not really my favorite thing. Yeah, I think there are fibers in this, look at that. I haven't used a fiber mascara in years. I think the last time I wore fiber mascara was when that MLM was selling their fiber mascara. Yeah, this is like, but yeah, I, I, I would say that of the mascaras I've used, this is one of the easier ones I've used. Like it, it feels very no hassle to me. I had a bit of a learning curve with those fibers because I just haven't used a mascara with fibers in it in some time. Good, good to know that there's fibers in it. I know that there are people who are very sensitive to that kind of thing close to their eye. I'm glad we like zoomed in on that. That's not something that I'm too terribly like, like that's not a concern of mine. I quite like that. I still think that, I still think I like, as of right now, my YSL mascara, but like more than this, the, the, the lash clash. But like, that's pretty. That's the full face done. 
a full face of Surratt, lots of first impressions, some just new shades to me. So let me get everything in front of me that I tried today. Let's do a little bit of a roundup. In last place is the highlighter. I actually don't dislike it. I just don't think it's for everyone. And off the top of my head, I don't know how much this is, but off the top of my head, I'm fairly certain I would tell you that it's not worth that amount of money. <laughs> the packaging is good. Like I, I like a lot of things about it and I actually like the way it ended up looking on my skin and I don't mind the glitter. Again, I'm kind of ranking this last because I just, I think it's one of those things that it's so personal and I could not possibly recommend something like this at this price point for you to, to explore. It's second to last place, uh, mostly because I'm not sure what it did and the packaging, the concealer. So this will require some testing. It's something that I might come around to and my under eyes actually look really good. But again, I probably didn't use that much and it also was just like my skin didn't really need a lot of that today. Maybe we'll do a spot conceal situation next time I use it on one of my moles to see how much coverage it has. But I mostly use concealer under my eyes. It's not something that I'm typically using to spot conceal. My under eyes don't look bad. So that's good, good news. The next three things, they're like very randomly ranked only because it's like I had like kind of not feelings about them. The mascara, like I just put it on and I was like, yeah, it's it's good. But like, I don't know if it's gonna change my life kind of good. And with Surratt prices, it's gonna, it's gonna need to be like change your life kind of good. The lip slick, it's a pretty formula. It's very comfortable. Do I feel like uh, more feelings than that about it? No, and that, you know, in and of itself is kind of like, I don't know, but my lips look good. So we'll continue playing with it. Maybe I'll develop feelings about it. Like it's too early, it's too soon to call, but it doesn't feel like it's a formula that's gonna give me the white ring of death, but who knows, I could be speaking too soon. Oh, there's a hole in the back of this. Anyway, the next thing is the powder. I was like, that's how you get it out. TBD, but I don't actually think it like really, I don't know that it actually changed the color that much, but I think it did a little bit. But when I, I actually think, I think I'm gonna like this more and more as I use it. I just think today I was like a little, you know, sometimes you get a little overwhelmed when you're trying a lot of new things. And I was like, I don't really know. I don't really know. But I do think it did slightly tint the, the shade. Now, I'm not sure if the matte one would, but we also need to find, like, I think there's just like a lot more for us to figure out together about this, for us to like know, know more about it. So that's kind of in the, in the unknown. In third place, I think this is, we're running out. Third place, the foundation is beautiful. I, the packaging is really what kills the experience for me. Like I actually feel that way. Like I, I absolutely feel as though I would like this so much more if it was just like in a pump. But like, I think my skin looks really good today. So this definitely did its job. It looks really beautiful on my skin. I like the product inside. <sighs> It's incredibly frustrating though that both of their foundations it, so far, you know, early dazing it with this one, appear to be incredibly beautiful. And it's just like, why is, why is the packaging this way? Why, why? Can't wait to use it again. So <laughs> it has that going for it. And then next up is the, in, the, in, number, in first place, this is a little bit of a cheat because I already knew that I liked this formula, but Barba Papa in the liquid formula is my number, like I think my cheek looks so good, you know, even removed from the highlighter, which I don't think looks bad, but a lot of that luminosity is coming from that blush. It's just a hint of pink with a little bit of almost like a silver sheen to it. Incredible, stunning. And that's how I feel about the new things. The old things I've said a lot about already, so you can go seek out further content on that. That's gonna wrap up today's video. I've been filming for 90 minutes and I'm sure that this video is very long. That was a really fun to explore Surat. Oh no, that wasn't first place. In first place <laughs> is the Smoky Ipatod, which was truly a delightful thing to just interact with because it's like, what do you do? And then I was like, I put it on. I was like, I still don't know what you do, but it was really fun to use you. I like it. Eyeliner is coming from my neck this year. Eyeliner, like, I'm trying all these brands that have beautiful eyeliners and why why wasn't why why wasn't I doing this earlier? I I am having a great time with eyeliner this year. Like I'm really having a good time with eyeliner this year between the Victoria Beckham and now this one. Oh, also the Kofi Beauty, which I've had for some time. Also a beautiful eyeliner formula, but like this is really fun. Okay, anyway. Back to what I was saying before. Thank you, Surat, for sending me a, a, all of this my way. I have some other Surat products that I have also purchased in the past that I will be testing and those will be in the final video. Like I have their liquid eyeliner. I've had that for some time. So like I know how I feel about that. But we'll put that all in like my final Surratt review video. But if you are new here and you wanna see how the evolution of these products goes, I would love to have you subscribe. And also if you do wanna buy anything from Surratt or you had your eye on anything and 
I was able to help you with today's video. Again, I don't consider today's video to be a thorough review. I was trying a lot of things. I do have a promo code with Surat. It's HOT15. Feel free to use it. I also have an affiliate link down below. Um, the 15, it saves you 15% off. And also, I've mentioned this before, if you are interested in Surat, typically the companies that carry Surat will do sales on Surat throughout the year. And Surat does a couple sales throughout the year. There are ways to get Surat at a discounted rate. So you don't need to buy that right now if that's like not in your budget or in your budget at all. I hope you just enjoyed today's video. Anyway, subscribe if you're not already. Make sure you like this video. And I'm also on patreon.com again if you would like to support me there. There's no pressure again. And same thing with merch. I've been recording for a really long time and I am tired of it. So I am gonna sign off for today. Remember to follow your hoat and you will find me. I will see you in a video very soon. Bye-bye. Thank <sighs> you.